Today's lesson objective is 8.2D. Order a set of real numbers arising from mathematical and real-world contexts. To begin with, we should become familiar with what types of numbers are out there. Most numbers fall in the category called real numbers. These are the set of rational and irrational numbers. The set of real numbers is denoted by the symbol capital R. Within the group of real numbers, we start with counting, or sometimes referred to as natural numbers. These are the set of positive numbers that begin at 1 and increase by increments of 1 each time. So they start at 1, then 2, then 3, then so on and so on. The next category is whole numbers. Whole numbers contains the set of counting or natural numbers and also includes the number 0. So it starts out at 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, and so on and so on. The next group, integers, is the set of counting or natural numbers, their opposites, and zero. So, as you can see from the example, you have negative one, negative two, negative three, and so on in this direction. And then from zero, we go one, two, three, and so on from this direction. The set of integers is denoted, uh, denoted by the symbol capital Z. The next group we refer to is rational numbers. Rational numbers are the set of numbers that can be expressed as a fraction, a over b, where a and b are integers and b cannot be zero, which includes the subset of integers, whole numbers, and counting numbers. So here's you a few good examples of rational numbers. See, here's the one we saw earlier in the integers. That can be made into a fraction by putting it over one. You have zeros included. Two could be made into a fraction by putting it over one. Okay, here's negative one half, eleven sevenths. Now it also includes um, repeating decimals or any terminating decimal. So if it's repeating with a pattern or if it's a terminating decimal, it falls under the category of rational numbers. The set of rational numbers is denoted, denoted by the symbol capital Q. Finally, we have a group called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are the set of numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction a over b, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to zero. So basically, any other real number that cannot be converted to a fraction, such as the number pi, the square root of 2, are some good examples. Um, these are considered irrational numbers. Let's just work out a couple of examples of what we would be expected to do under this lesson objective. This first one says, order the following numbers from greatest to least. Okay, so it's important we identify exactly what it's asking us to do. We want to go from greatest to least. Now, in order to do that, it's going to help if we can get these all so that they're in the same form, whether we do fractions or percents or decimals. Um, I'm going to choose to do decimals here. So here we got two and three fourths. So three fourths we know is equivalent to 0.75 because that's pronounced three quarters. And in money terms, three quarters is 75 cents. All right, our next one we got is negative one and five eighths. Now this may not be one that you have memorized as a fraction to a decimal, but you can figure it out by simply dividing eight into five to see what decimal it forms. So you can see that it doesn't go into 5, so put a 0 there. So it means we've got to put a decimal and put a 0 here and continue dividing. So we bring our decimal straight up. And so we figure out 8 can go into 56 times, which gives us 48. Now since we have a remainder, we still keep going. Bring down our 0. And we know that it can go into 20 twice. Okay, still got our remainder, so we still go again. Bring down our zero. And look, there we go. Eight goes into 45 times. Don't have any more remainders, so we can stop. So we can now see that negative one five eighths is really negative one point six two five. Now the simple pi is irrational. It's a decimal that keeps on going forever and ever without repeating. However, for purposes of comparing it 
in order from greatest to least, we're going to use 3.14, which is just, just, just a rounded off version of pi. Okay, and then our next one we have, sorry, that should be negative, 1.5625. Need anything to that one, it's already a decimal. And then finally we got a repeating decimal. Again, if you wanted to, you could go out a couple decimal places and round it off. Since the 3 is repeating, it would just round to 3, helping us to compare it again. Now, when we're going from least to greatest, it helps me to draw a number line so I can kind of get an idea where these numbers go. All right, so I'm going to just put a 0 here, just kind of give me a reference point. So we got a couple of negative numbers here. We got negative 1.625 and negative 1.5625. Okay, so when trying to decide where that should go, okay, remember the larger the value, the further to the left it would go. So here we got a 1 and a 1, and behind the decimal we got a 6 and a 5. So 6 is higher than 5, so this one has more value as a negative number, and so it goes further to the left. So we place a spot here for this number. And then we're going to place another spot over here this number. Okay, now on the positive side we can do the same thing. However, these are much easier. Look at the whole numbers here. The whole number here is 0 on 0 0.33. Here it's 3 for pi, 3.14, and here it's 2 for 2 and 3 quarters, 2.75. So on this side, it's rather simple. Just using the whole numbers, we can figure out that this one would come first, and then this one will come second, and finally we got this one here. Now since this did say greatest to least, we want to go from this point all the way back to this point. So starting at this point, we know that our first number is 3.14. The next one is this 2.75. Next one is this 0 0.3 repeating. Okay, our next one over here was um, negative 1.5625. And then our final one is this negative 1.625 or negative 1.58. And just remember when you're looking at answers, you're going to have to convert these back to the original form. So this 2.75 has to go back to being 2 and 3 quarters, and this would have to be back to negative 1 5 eighths, and pi would go back to the pi symbol. Okay, so there's one example. Let's look at one last example. This one says the length of one side of several triangles was taken and recorded below. Place the lengths in ascending order. Ascending. So that's different. Ascending means we go from smallest to largest, or least to greatest. Okay, so if it helps you, you can write L, draw an arrow, and put a G, so you know this is least to greatest. Okay, so I would still use the same process, though. I would look at how do I get them all to the same form. I'm going to choose to use decimals here. So we got 12 divided by 5. 5 can go into 12 twice, with the remainder of 2. So if it helps, you can rewrite that as a mixed number, 2 and 2 fifths. And then I know if I change 2 fifths so that it has a denominator of 10, I'd have to multiply both the top and the bottom by 2. So that's really 2 and 4 tenths. And 2 and 4 tenths as a decimal is just 2.4. Okay, that one's already done. 2 and 1 third, we might have that one memorized. You've seen, probably heard 1 third used quite a bit. That's the one that's the 3 with its repeating. Okay, so 2.3 repeating. Now, square root of 2, okay, um, square root of 2, actually, let's bring down the 2.5, so I don't forget it. Okay, square root of 2 is maybe not one you're as familiar with. Um, it's an irrational number, so in other words, it's one of those decimals that keeps on going without ever repeating itself. Um, 
but for this one you can use a calculator and type it in and it would round off to about 1.41 all right and our last one's already done for us so 2.3 and again you can use the technique of using a number line if you like since these are all positive numbers I don't need to worry about zero so I don't have to go to the negative side so here I'm just going to simply start by looking at the whole numbers. So we have 2, 2, 2, 1, and 2. Well, 1 wins, because it's going to be the least, right? Okay, so now we're going to look for the next one. Well, we've got 2, 2, 2, and 2, so that doesn't help. So we look at the next place value, 4, 5, 3, 3. Well, 3 is definitely less than 4 or 5, so that kind of brings us down to these two. Now, this one's just 3 with nothing after it. Okay, if anything, it's just zeros after it. However, this one's 3 repeating, meaning it's got 3, 3, 3, 3, and so on and so on. So this one actually would have less value because there's nothing after the 3. It's a terminating decimal. So this one will go next. And then right behind it would be this guy. Okay, so all that leaves us now is 2.4, 2.5. So 4 is less than 5, so it's going to go next. And then our last one here, and the greatest, we go here. So if this is from least to greatest, it would go in this exact order, 1.41, which was the square root of 2. And then next was 2.3, which that's actually what it was. And next was this 2.3 repeating, which was really the 2 to 1 third. And then next we had the 2.4, which was really the 12 fifths. And finally we had the 2.5, which was actually 2.5. So now we have our numbers in order, in ascending order, so from least to greatest. Now they change that word to descending order. Descending means you're going from high to low, so greatest to least. Okay, but for this one we're looking at ascending, so we did this in the right order. Alright, that concludes this lesson.